We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? Welcome to our Relay Radio number 141C. This is the Law and Order Edition for Friday, January 27th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh, really. I'm your host, Andy Cowan, and I've got my usual suspects, Stephen Griffith, Dan Latherton, and Amber Besecker. Welcome back. And, of course, you listeners out there, you make the show go. So if you find uh, issues or problems or um, errors in anything that we say... Um, you can either keep them to yourself, or you can go ahead and, and voice those concerns at Podcast at gmail.com, or phone them in at 470-222-6759. Now, on to, uh, on to some of the stories that we've found from around the world. Turkey's new constitution would end its democracy. Or at least that's according to the headline. This is out on Bloomberg. Yeah. So... Um, my foreign correspondent and expert in the in matters uh, around Europe. What uh, what say you, Daniel? Well, uh, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Erdogan, um, is his is to Turkey what our dear leader is to us. Um, <clears throat> He's not dear leader yet. Only he survived an active coup. He, that has depths that have yet to be plumbed. We'll get to that. Um, well, well. But this, in some ways, not that disturbing. In other ways, horrifically disturbing. Oh, From okay. What I, I, I gathered. Then um, give, us, give us the downside and then we'll end on the upside. It's easier to do the up and then the down. Okay, um, then we'll do that. <laughs> the upside is they're moving from a more parliamentary system of democracy to a more American presidential style democracy. That's is, the upside. Is that an upside? Well, I mean, we're seeing what it's doing to us compared, now. Compared to the darkness hidden within this, that's the upside. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So taken in it, total, that's, that's your silver lining, which should be telling. Okay. So <clears throat> what is the, uh, the heart of darkness of this thing? It's transitioning towards a presidential system, but holding on just enough to par its parliamentary origins to make it a perverse power grab. Um, okay. What this does is it makes it so that beforehand in, in their, their parliamentary system, there is both a president and a prime minister. Um, and the members of uh, the cabinet Mm -hmm. are actually um, not appointed by the president. They are also can be uh, they have to also answer if parliament requests to parliament. They, so they, they have questions like if you occasionally watch C-SPAN and you have uh, the, the questions for the prime minister uh for, for Britain, it's very similar, but it's for their their members of the the cabinet. Um, this makes it so that the president can appoint the cabinet. The president can be head of a party. Now, typically, the president's the head of the party here in the United States. That's yeah. not that, that, that interesting. Though that, However, that really is kind of a figurehead position anyway. Yeah. Know, for the most part. How... Ever where this thing gets dark, we have primaries um, right. to to elect our our figures. Um, as head of party, Edrigan could pick who gets to run for his party. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so he could hand pick who runs. And considering his considerable control of his nation, that means he puts into place people who will agree with him. Also, anyone who is dissents, he can then kick out of the party. If I may step in here, a little for, for people over here, a little bit of political education when it comes to parliamentary systems and what this is, which is a presidential parliamentary system. Mm-hmm. Unlike us, where we vote for a candidate. Uh, what parliamentary systems you do is you vote for a party, and that party has a list. And say that party wins 51 – or say the party wins 20 percent of the vote. Okay, they get 20 percent of the seats, however many seats that is. Say it's five. Okay, well, the first five people off that list then get those seats. That's how that system works rather than ours where I'm voting for Marco Rubio or yeah. somebody else. You vote for the party. You vote essentially like the line item down ticket voting. You vote Republican. You vote Democrat. You're not voting for a person. And he gets to pick the roster. And that's the big thing with that is if if the person in charge can pick the roster, that's getting a little squidgy. It allows him Hmm. to make sure that in the next elections, should this, this take hold, um, People who will be able to then change law to keep him in power as long as he wishes to be in power. So there are no term limits in Turkey that we've seen. It, it, that we've seen. Not as such, no. Hmm. Okay. You know, uh, just to be kind of devil's advocate or perhaps jaded American at this point, I'm not seeing that that's actually a whole hell of a lot different than what we do here. Well, because really, really, our primaries are a joke. Because you're still the people that are going to be chosen end up being chosen by the people that have that ability. But here you still know who it is that is going to be there. In a parliamentary system, you might not necessarily know. Depends on the rules they set forth. A lot of the lists are just, you don't know. The party head knows. They are the ones that have the list. Now, for, for instance, going... Well, you would know who you, were gonna, who, who you were actually going to be able to select from. No. Well, again, it's the, okay, the party is 400 people. Okay, well, some of those 400 people are going to be on that list. You don't know which ones. You also don't know the order. Um, so it's just a – that would just be a selective order thing though. Usually it's by seniority or you know other things done. This is more – again, I want to put people in charge who are going to be – Yes, men. Yes, men, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I still don't see a whole lot of difference between that system and ours. I mean to be – Perfectly bluntly honest. I mean, that's that's the whether it be Republican or whether it be Democrat. Each one of our parties does the same thing. A, it's less transparent doing okay. it through parliamentary system like this versus us. But that so basically, again, it's just can, a transparency issue. Really, is is, is what's going that's on here? Part of it again. I can call out an individual senator who's running. I can call out an individual you know representative who's running and. and you know, through my actions, I can tear down that person. Much, much harder to do inside an actual parliamentary system. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to hide corruption inside of a parliamentary system. Yeah. There are advantages, though, because you tend to have a lot more parties. And there's a lot more coalition governments that get formed because that's the only way things move. Uh, I.e. France is an excellent France example. and Italy are the two biggest um, where you see that. But I think Fran- I think Italy has over 200 political parties. I would not know. I'm that's not, wow. I'm an expert in Italy. Yeah. Um, but there are there are a broad number of parties within France and most governments are coalition governments. Um, but the, the, the troubling thing is if this what they're referring to as 
a reform passes and with how the nation of Turkey is going, this moves it closer to Edrigan taking power and holding it more as a dictator than as a president. That, the part that I highlighted there, perhaps the most clever yeah. and pernicious <clears throat> element of this proposed change is that it limits the president. Oh, it, it that it limits, limits the, the president, president to two terms, but only yeah. start, starting with ratification and new elections. And that would allow Edgerton to remain in power until 2029. When he chooses to retire at 75. If yep. he chooses to retire at 75. So and basically he, he, he would he would be putting these things into play so that they affect the next guy, not him. Yeah. Interesting. But I think that's probably how it would probably work here in the United States, too. Because, you know, trying to get trying to get any real reform by having the people that it would reform vote for it voting against their best interest their own personal best interest is hard to do i mean this this might just be one of those concessions to yeah we're not going to be able to to get the guy to do that to vote against his own best interest so we'll have him vote for what would be a good practical idea after he's gone I mean, again, the, I, I'm, I'm being as, yeah, optional as as possible here. It's like how how can this, how could this be, in the real world? Because <laughs> everything's a concession to something, in government, mm-hmm. you know, especially when you have multiple parties and you and you have these little tin tin pot dictators around. <sighs> Hmm. Again, this I think will will further keep Turkey out of the EU should it pass. Because yeah. the EU does not like Edrigan. Nope. Well, the the EU is that's another thing that we we need to talk about at some point. As now, there's uh, I've heard rumors that Germany was thinking of doing an exit. That that is really on the far out. Um I've been keeping tabs. Mm-hmm. That that's that's more on the outside should other things fall apart. Um the one that's more likely to exit is France. Um hmm. but that that I don't think will take hold until after their next presidential election. Um, because if if they do fall to the right in this next wave of elections, I expect them to leave. Hmm. Uh, and the right has been on the rise throughout the world, especially the West. And especially in Europe. So Mama Van's uh, mentioned in the chat room, I'm wondering, I'm beginning to wonder if we're seeing the end of democracy worldwide. Uh, I don't see it ending worldwide because um, there, there, there are... There are global Democrat- trends, though. There are global there are, trends about this. Yeah, but there are places that are, are bastions of, of democracy and social order. Um, places like Iceland, actually, which is very progressive. I mean, they even have a pirate party. Uh, yeah, which actually garnered more seats this past election. Not as many as they were hoping, <laughs> but more seats. Um, and they actually, when they had their financial crisis, prosecuted people who were responsible and yeah. put bankers in prison. Um, no, I don't see and end to democracy. Uh, there will still be places that are democratic. However, I see the old guard falling by the wayside. 
as the right continues to gobble up power unless the pendulum swings back quickly. Uh, and nationalism takes hold. Every, every nation that becomes nationalistic is essentially going, I don't want to have any sort of positive economic impact on the globe. <laughs> you other nations, please step up. Uh, and then you have places that are, well, more totalitarian that have growing commies, i.e. China, uh, who are going, hey, this is fabulous. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah. There, there's always going to be somebody left to fill the void. And we have, and, we have, you know, all the, um, all the countries in Africa. They're, they're switching actually to green energy. <clears throat> that's yeah. the thing that's actually a, a positive sign for the world. <clears throat> um, I mean, you have Morocco well, is going, yeah. hi, we're going to be all solar. Yeah. Well, they're skipping entire generations of technology because they can. They don't have to do the the incremental steps that the the Western world has because it's already been done. So they can just get off the shelf components and jump ahead. Yeah, no. Um, we're seeing positive things coming from India. They're planning to have a huge solar farm. Um, Morocco, you'll be able to see it from space. Um, apparently, the echo is back. Yeah, uh, just just refresh your browsers, guys. Sorry about that. Again, um, we didn't do anything. Then let's see here. Uh, we're, we're seeing that uh, wind power is becoming more and more of a thing up in Scotland. Mm-hmm. Um, we're seeing uh, adoptions of uh, geothermal and uh, wave power for Iceland. So places are, are, are going green and doing it effectively. Even here in the U.S., we're starting to see that solar is creating more jobs than any our energy field. However, I don't know how long that's going to last. Yeah, because that was based on subsidies and, and uh, certain... Certain, certain things that took place at the end of W and the start of Obama's administration. Yeah, and continued through. But now, of yeah. course, changing of the guard, what's going to happen? Yeah, um, but no, we actually there's saw enough mo- momentum to keep it going. It, 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 it's 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 weird because it just happened this past quarter. The numbers came in mm-hmm. that solar now has outpaced everybody else. Yeah, it's just is there enough momentum to keep that going and keep pulling us towards solar now that the technology is becoming more and more affordable, or will will our progress fall back? And will we re-embrace fossil fuels and doom our planet? Well, that's definitely the question of the age. We need to get off this rock. Yeah. David definitely does say that. So need to put that on a shirt somewhere. Okay, so let's uh, let's move along from Turkey. Uh, Obviously, that's going to be an area of contention for some time, and we'll just kind of keep an eye on it. Have to. Okay. So, Elizabeth Warren to support confirmation of Dr. Ben Carson for the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Sad day. Yeah. All right, that was Buffalo Charge. Yeah. (laughs) Um, To TLDR, her uh, amazing wall of text here. Basically, he's bad, but he's not as bad as it could be, and she's tired of fighting it, so she's just going to go ahead and throw in her support. Yes, I have serious, deep, profound concerns about Dr. Carson's inexperience to lead the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Yes, I adamantly disagree with many of the outrageous things that Dr. Carson said during his presidential campaign. Yes, he is not the nominee I wanted, but the nominee I wanted is not the test. Uh, I mean, she goes on to say if he doesn't follow through on his commitments, she'll be the first person who he, he hears from. But what the fuck does that matter? It'll be too late. Part of this I also see as horse trading. It it because, absolutely has to be, yeah. Because she's, I, she's hoping that DeVos will be a, a better allocation of her adversarial assets. Yeah. Yeah, everybody seems it's, to be up against her. We'll we'll let 
let Carson pass to make sure that even the Republicans who like her and she, her family's got her hand, their hands in a lot of pies and a lot of senators. So they're going to be having monetary pressures to put her in that position. Mm -hmm. But there's been such a vocal outcry against her, um, which we'll actually start covering in our good ideas section. Um, that there's enough pushback that we may see her not get appointed. Um, and I think this was a horse trade to try and make that a reality. Um, the, there are other, the other one where I think we may actually see the nominee not get elected uh, and not appointed is Pruitt. That's the other fight. Uh, the other ones, I think, will all get appointed. But Devos and Pruitt, I think, are the two that we may see not get appointed. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is who is this compromise going to affect? It's not going to be Senator Warren. <sighs> no, it's going to affect poor people. Yeah, yeah uh, and that's hence the disappointment from a lot of people, including myself. No, I, 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 I am disappointed, but I also see this as an a unfortunate political reality because the Democrats do not have the cachet to hold the entire thing hostage. Uh, nor do they have the political will to do so. Uh, what you can say what you want about the Republican Party, they have an iron will to do what they think is in the interests of their constituencies. The Democrats do not. No, and I, 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 I do understand that perspective. I, I well and truly do that she wants to put her energy into something she feels is more worthy of stopping because having DeVos as the head of the Department of, of Education, it could be argued would be far more damaging than what Ben Carson could do. So I, I understand, but it is still very disappointing that to, to see her give up the fight against Ben Carson and say like, fuck it, he's terrible, but whatever, let's just go all in on DeVos. Well, again, because there will be I, real tangible effects of that, and and oh, well, I I believe so, but I I also to to come mildly to her defense, and I do mean mildly. <clears throat> Carson doesn't get appointed. That means we go back to the cavalcade of characters for the president yeah. to try and pull another nominee from. And, and that's what she oh was saying. Oh dear, mm -hmm. who is he going to choose this time? And that's and what she was saying. Shortlist? Was that like, you know, no, he's not. It's kind of how I summed it up of like, he's terrible, but there could potentially be worse. So we're just going to say, fuck it. Is, I, I think as we said earlier, he next. chose certain nom certain appointees just based on appearance, not merit. Oh, yeah. 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 I think, honestly, though, the, the way that she phrased this, she knows who the next one would be. I think she really? has yeah, a really good indicator list. of who's next. And... Carson's better than that guy or girl oh, good grief. or whoever it is. Yeah. And we've seen the rest of the people that he picked. That's not that's not a far cry from what we're seeing. No, I, I think our best hope for Carson is going to be that he's bumbling and incompetent and doesn't affect much change. Or he does the almost he actually into the Trump category and goes just really hands off the decisions to people who know better, like the bureaucrats who've been there forever. Well, he has stated to his, to his merit, he has stated that he would defer to people that know more than he does. Mama Van says, I would not be surprised if Carson resigns in the first year. For some reason, Trump uh, seemed hell-bent on appointing Carson <clears throat> to his cabinet. It's true, since, you know, he yeah, was the original Yeah, because he originally said, I, I'm not... I, I, health, yeah. I have no business being appointed to any of these cabinet positions. Yeah. That, that was his first call. Um, but... And remember, uh, Carson, during during the primary race, he left the field for a book tour, mm -hmm. like halfway through. Yeah, mm -hmm. there was even speculation that he was just using this to essentially promote his book. Um, 
I mean, but, as long as he understands that high rises aren't grain silos, I guess. Are they shaped like pyramids? <laughs> hey. <laughs> if this guy named the, Joseph. The be- does he have a the best possible. <laughs> yeah, the best possible scenario is that he does defer to those who are already part of the department. Um, worst case scenario is a number of people die due to poor housing. It, it's cold, terrible calculus, but that's the truth of the matter. And that's why I understand and in some ways support the rage because these are going to be lives. I yeah. mean, we are, we are counting the, the effects of this in human lives. Okay. If you were in the same position, which is more important, the Department of Education or HUD? I would say education, and here's my argument. As Warren pointed out, it's not just schools. Right. You're dealing with being a lender. You would be crippling people with debt Mm -hmm. if you mismanage this. And you would be killing more people due to starvation, lack of health care. That sort of economic devastation would claim more lives than if you did not appoint funds properly towards public housing. Yes, I don't disagree uh, by any means. Um, It's just that you can know that and you can understand that and, and support that, but also be furious at the fact that this is a decision that may also cost lives. Well, it's it, that's the you cruel, can be both. That's the cruel calculus of it. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, yeah. I'm the, not, I'm not happy with any of the picks. The gambit here is that by doing this, DeVos might not get confirmed, but if she does, what will it have been for? Did she? But would she really have been the deciding vote? And it's nothing that we can, that is you know, a good question. It's nothing that we can necessarily predict or anything like that, but, you know, Warren, as far as whether or not she'd be the deciding vote, Warren is one of those senators that can drum up quite a bit of stir and support. Um, she's a, a very uh, vocal presence, and I think that's also what have people kind of... Uh, up in arms about this and upset is that one of the most vocal champions of the people in a way that they perceived Bernie Sanders to be is in their eyes rolling over and going, all right, I'm tired of this bullshit. Like I'll make this really shitty Sophie's choice and Mm. she's not going to be the one affected. And I think she, I'm not saying that she doesn't know that or appreciate that. Yeah. But oh, I'm I saying that she... the people who are going to be affected, they do have a right to be upset about that. Well, she will oh, be affected no, politically. I... Yeah. I mean, there's going to there's gonna be fallout from this no matter well, what yeah, she does. Well, yeah, but it's going to be very yeah. different than how poor people yeah, are going to be it's, affected. It's, it's, it's not her life on the line. It's exactly. A, it's her, her position as senator. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, but at that point, the political uh, – it's it's all political political maneuvering because if she says, okay, fine, let Carson through, it's Carson's decisions that affect those people. No, it is. She, she can she at that point she has passed the buck. She has stated but, her case. She can move on. There is the right. there is the political hit that she allowed it to happen, but she didn't know what was going to happen. The trigger was pulled by someone else. So yeah, and I think she's saving again, the political capital for something else, like it's, maybe it's a run in 2020. The fact that she has made herself a, a very vocal you know, champion of the people, and now the people who she championed for are looking at her going, wait, what? And yeah. they see it as, as a, a, a kind of hypocrisy. Um, 
for her to just go ahead. And, and <clears throat> the unrealistic thing, let's face it, it is unrealistic. It's never going to fucking happen. The unrealistic thing that I think a lot of people w- want to see happen is for Democrats to try to stonewall every single fucking one of these. And yeah, I don't think that can be done. That's not possible. No. And and that's why we, I think we see so much capitulation on the Democrats' part, because they, they simply can't – they can't expend that much political capital to do it. Uh, they also, have so many other things that they things have that, to do. They, they got to pick their battles. Quoting and, from Babylon 5, one of my favorite characters, Londa Malari, only a fool fights a war on two fronts. Only the heir to the throne of the kingdom of fools fights a war on 12 fronts. Yeah. Um, one of the things that happened this weekend mm-hmm. was a gathering of the Republican establishment in Philadelphia. And one of the things that came out of that is a lot of the younger Republicans, Trump Republicans, are pressuring McConnell to blow up the filibuster. That's something that's on the table. This sacrifice may actually be to try and keep the filibuster. It may. Hmm. Because there have been a number of concessions that to us look nightmarish. But it may be to try and engender in McConnell, hey, leave the filibuster in. We're not going to abuse it. But it needs to stay. Or maybe not even that. McConnell may be getting enough uh, other Republicans or other people backing her so that if that comes up, she has the favors to pull in to shoot it down. Yeah. But I I think a lot of people are also struggling with the idea of the Republicans got pretty much everything they wanted by blocking anything that they didn't like. And it's and I think people are expecting Democrats to do the same while not understanding that the Democrats are not in the same situation. No, Nor they don't will have we control. ever be. Nor will they ever be, because that takes a a level of intestinal fortitude <clears throat> that mm-hmm. Democrats have not shown right. in an insanely long time. Generations. No, I, com- I completely agree. I'm just saying yeah. that from the perspective of, of somebody who may not understand the nuances of that. Yeah. They're looking at the they're they're solely looking at the difference between well Republicans got whatever the fuck they wanted by putting their foots down and being or their feet down foots Jesus Christ and being like no we're not we're not gonna fucking settle for this shit we'll you know read from children's books at the fucking thing like we we're not gonna allow any of this to happen and then they look at the Democrats and they look at Elizabeth Warren who is you know front and center for the people's fight. And they look at her go, well, you know what? It could be worse, so we're I'm okay. going to just go ahead and let, fuck whatever Ben Carson. Let, and me point they so- don't... let me point something out that this is a great example of. You are holding her to a higher standard yeah. than the entire Republican Party is capable of living up to. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that this is what people are looking at. I know, but, Who that's, don't understand the but that's also the reason why... The Democrats cannot hang time right now with the Republicans. No, I completely, I completely agree. Oh yeah, I'm just well, saying. I'm that saying that for the audience. Why. I, I know you know. I'm saying that for the audience. <laughs> yeah. Is that you know we, we're holding individual people to where we used to hold all politicians mm-hmm. as the the paragons of virtue, the people that are leaders and they have a moral character and they want to do right by us, the the voter, the people that. The constituent. And then we have people that read Green Eggs and Ham as a <laughs> filibuster. Yeah. And make everybody look like jerks by shutting down the government and throwing a hissy fit until they get 97% of what they want. Yeah. And Those I mean, people should be voted Democrats. out, but that's what they but they got what they wanted for their constituents. So for them, it's a win. Mm-hmm. And... We're not slimy enough to do that. And that's what's hurting us. In a well, like I've... twisted, twisted way. And we can't, we can't, if we go down that route, we lose the parts that are ourselves. 
the parts that we hold ourselves to be of high moral character, of high but religion. See, that's we hold ourselves I... standard, yeah. 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 And, but see, I disagree with the idea that, like, I know that we think that, but I disagree with the idea that it's actually true. Because I don't draw an equivalency between fucking shit up and fixing the shit that got fucked up. I I wish I could do the same. But I'm just I'm just reading I'm reading the tea leaves. This is what has already been shown to happen. Yeah, no, I, I'm not disagreeing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I want there to be a way to come back from it. I really, so really do. We're gonna have to get our hands dirty. Yeah. At the end, like. Yeah. Oh yeah, I agree. But sadly, Amber, you bring the whole point. It's the yeah, we have to get our hands dirty. There's a lot of things we got to do. You know, showing that moral fortitude, as you're almost saying. But that you know, because we're standing up for actual principles and doing things. We're not going to be the same, but the way it's going to be twisted, the way it's going to be used and everything else, it will be shown as being worse than anything they did. But and do because the Republicans of the current care control, about that? It's not that the Republicans you're fighting for at this point, it's the people. And the Repu- no, no, no. The, no, the, the Republicans office. do not care about that, <clears throat> which you. is why no. they can get away with it. That's what I mean. But, they have, yeah, but they have mean. proven that it doesn't matter for them because it's 2017 and it doesn't matter. Yeah. And nothing matters. That's right. For them, it doesn't matter. That's the problem. But the thing is, for the Democratic voter, it matters. But what is the same thing that pretty much any Democratic voter can agree on that we have no spine? Yes, but as soon as we start to show a spine, then... We need somebody who doesn't care. Yes. We need somebody who doesn't give a shit if we're (laughs) liked or not. And We need people there who are willing to do the, I'm one term, if I last longer than that, cool. This and is my that doesn't go. work yeah. in a realm of career politicians that are And I'm not talking about – yeah, you're, it's not going to be a career politician. But yeah. it, I don't even mean in the way of like <clears throat> I don't care what the people want. I'm going to – no, I'm talking about in the way of like I'm going to do what should be done according to what the people want and according to facts and actual reality. And if it's twisted, if it's put out there that I suck or whatever the fuck – I don't give a shit. I'll be here long enough to do what I need to do, and then I'm out. Yeah, the, the perfect example of what you're describing is Mr. Smith goes to Washington. We need Mr. Smith. Okay. Um, in in another side anecdote, um, my uh, my uncle was a Methodist minister for a long time. Yeah, career minister, and he he was a uh, he had a very particular ideal of the way the Bible should be taught and presented to the congregation. He was asked to leave by several congregations because the message that he brought out of the Bible was not what they wanted to hear. So. You can be someone of that high moral character that is working based on the facts, because he had a he had a fairly decent interpretation. You know, even for, as an atheist, I have have a a good idea of what he was bringing to the table. But it was not the prosperity ministry. It was not what the people wanted to hear. Right. So again, the congregation or the constituency doesn't like people with backbone. They well, won't apparently vote they for do. Them. Only because not not they, large enough to actually have them stay in office. I don't you take know, Alan take Alan Grayson for instance. Take Trump. I mean, why did everybody say about what's everyone saying about Trump? He uh, spoke no, no. his we, mind. We, he we wasn't can, afraid to I know, but we can't we can't we can't talk That's about the Republicans oranges. because the Republican voter is a different breed. We have to look at the Democratic voter because they don't vote the same way. If I mean, you they, can't they get don't. a Democratic voter to support somebody who runs on a platform of reality and facts, then what do you perceive is wrong with the Democratic voter that they're unable to do that? Uh, a lot of it is smear campaigns. Again, because we are predictable. We are super predictable. All it takes is a little bit of smear, a little bit of dirt, and that person's going down. A little bit of dirt 
on the Republican Party. Let's take Anthony Weiner, for instance. <laughs> oh, good. How many times I did that man? How many times did that man show his junk to everybody and still get reelected? It, it, it took three scandals to finally torpedo him. Three. In New York. <laughs> I mean, so no, and I'm just and I'm just clarifying for my sake, because I really want to <laughs> know. So if I understand correctly, the problem that you're identifying with the Democratic uh, voter base is that they will not put their support behind someone who they feel has been tainted. moral failings. Yes. So the problem is a superiority and act and elitism complex. And so Lone Star, now you see that evil will always triumph because good is dumb. A little bit of that too. All righty. Sadly, I kind of have to agree with them in a way. It's yeah, Democrats since they do, we do tend to hold ourselves and our own people to higher standards than most. One failing, one not even minor failing, one decent failing. We're like, sorry, you're out. You you don't follow this. You know, you're not one of us. With so, Republicans, right. it's almost like a badge of honor. Going cool. Yeah, that's Look at it. Me. I'm how in the club you, now. Let's go. How would you explain then the divisiveness over? how so many Democrats would not vote for Bernie Sanders, who arguably had less of a smear on his record than Clinton did. Because he started out as an independent and came in as a Democrat solely to bring Hillary Clinton further to the left. That was his original stated goal. Yeah. Ba basically, there he was wasn't one of them. He was an outsider was already, dragging. Yeah, it was already so <clears throat> entrenched. Because again, these are Congress critters we're dealing with here. So they still have the same obligations to stay in office. So most of them lay low. You don't really hear from a lot of them. But boy, you know, we, we know an awful lot of Republican congressional leaders, don't we? Yeah. But the Democrats, yes, there are fewer of them, but we don't know them because they're not as loud and vocal because if they are loud and vocal, then their constituency will have more dirt on them to not like. I mean, they got to lay low even, to stay even, in office. Even the quieter ones within the Republican Party we know. Mm -hmm. Orrin Hatch, Lindsey Graham. They're quieter. Yeah. Um, Jeff Sessions. We, we, we know these people. And we know them because they've done horrible things. And they have horrible ideas. And yet they're still there. All right. So what this is telling me is, is that, that the Democratic Party a, is not worth voting for. And well, we need something new. That's what, well, what I think. It, what it's telling me is there's a culture problem in the Democratic voter base. And yeah. that in order to ever elect a, a liberal politician from that voter base... You would have to ch and that have that candidate be effective and, and be embraced in a way that the Republicans embrace whatever garbage fire we put in front of them. Huh? We would have to change the culture of Democratic voters to something less elitist, something less uh, get the idea out of their heads that somebody has to be um, clean. Uh, something, yeah, a fucking saint, something and more palatable, inoffensive, something more palatable than that. Yeah, the, the the Democratic voter wants Superman. Yeah, yeah, the perfect Boy Scout. That's who has been a Democrat all their lives. Spit, curl, and everything. Okay, that that's pretty much what the ideal is. Truth, justice, the American way does yeah. no wrong, can't be defeated. Yeah, they we want w someone we, inhuman. We want someone to be proud of. We don't want to vote for somebody that we're not proud of. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can be proud of somebody without them being perfect. And, and I think that's what... Right, but... If what you're as, saying is correct, that's the problem, is that Democrats don't perceive that they can have pride in someone who 
you know, who with shit stains the way everyone else's does. Which explains why even so many of them don't vote at all. Because they can't so, find somebody that's worthy of their vote. So they just okay. don't participate. I know actually a number of independents who are independent because of that specific reason. They can't even join the Democratic Party because they think they're all corrupt. Okay. I don't know where to go from there, but that's that's the analysis that I've so far been able to put together. Well, no, it, it tells me where myself and other people who are going to get involved in this need to focus their efforts. Yes. Which is why I was interested in the answer. As, as you guys perceive it. Mm. Yeah, I, I think we just have... We have built pedestals upon which we can no longer reach to put anyone on. Also, let's look at the, the guys that the Democratic Party looks back fondly on. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. The names that actually get brought up as, as politicians of old that Democrats of today like. Ted Kennedy. FDR. I wouldn't say Ted Kennedy. <laughs> no. I would say John. Yeah. Uh, and Ted. Bobby. John and Bobby, FDR, um, to, to others, they, they look all the way back to Carter to some Je- to Jefferson. But through the fog of time, they have forgotten these these figures faults. Well, also also the information age. It yeah. is faults are the only thing we hear about now. So again, we suffer from too much information on people. So there's too much dirt all the time. It's the entire 24 hour news cycle. So it's, uh, so it's difficult for of, people to be clean that way. It's it, it, there's a different culture on reporting. Yeah. It used to be that as a reporter, as a member of the press, you understood that the private life is not something that you cover. Unless you were a tabloid. Yeah. And that was relegated to the yellow papers. Yeah, it was looked down upon. Yeah. I mean... But now it's just part of the news cycle. The, the press corps knew what John was up to. Yeah. But what a man did in his bedroom doesn't matter as news. long as it doesn't affect national policy. We don't care. It wasn't... News. Mm-hmm. It wasn't newsworthy. So, but now, anything anybody does. Hell, the choice of presidential pet is front page news. Yeah. Yeah. You know who would do really well in politics? Markiplier. No. No, he, he would. No, he wouldn't, and I'll tell you why. Okay. The man gets hurt. Oh, is he too thin-skinned like Trump? No, he's thin-skinned, and instead of lashing out, he hurts himself. Yeah. Uh, He's a sensitive soul. You can't be sensitive and play politics. True. You have to be ruthless. And... If you're going to be thin-skinned, you have to be like Trump, where you just hit them harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because underneath all that, he actually is kind of just a nice, kind of fluffy guy. Yeah. No, he's soft. But what I, where I was going with that was we need somebody that, that has that social media kind of aspect, where, where he has shown his entire life in one way or another in on camera all the time, right in his house. And then outside of the house doing things that, you know, he's escaped from just being the gamer guy to now he's doing other things, too. So, yeah, you know, he's escaped that and continued his own brand. We need somebody that is brandable like that, that we embrace the faults along with the virtues. And that's. The problem. We don't have anybody that we can rally behind that is a flawed human being. Well, and, there, and there's also, from the perspective of, uh, I hate saying shit like this, but from the perspective of a woman, there's also the idea that one of the reasons that 
in whatever way I end up involved in this fight, it's never going to be front and center. I'm never going to run for any type of office, regardless of whether or not I might be qualified, is because it's out there somewhere that I'm a survivor of sexual assault and rape and domestic violence. I would be torn apart over that. Torn the fuck apart. And I am not going to put myself in that position. That's true. Anyone who's going to run for office... In this day and age, if there is any scrap of dirt, mm-hmm. any scrap whatsoever that can be used to hurt you it will or be the done. people you love, mm-hmm. it will be done. But I think why I said as, from perspective as a woman, not that men don't go through this, but it this applies more to women. It's the patriarchy. It's the misogyny. I mean, it's there. It's yeah. Well, it's it's that these are not things. That, you know, when, when when male politicians get caught in scandals or get wrecked for things that they did, it's not things that were done to them. Mm-hmm. No. Whereas uh, with women, yeah, whereas with women, it's going to be, well, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Why didn't, why did you stay? Why did you, you know, whatever. And yeah. so I will never put myself in that position or my family in that position. And I know a lot of women who are in the same boat who would be, given their education, given the types of people they are, could be great for public office, will never hold it. Never, ever. There's, there's tons of people who are like that in, in, in any number of things that will disqualify them for running for public office. Um, whether it is that they're a sensitive soul or hell. Anybody who has a family member that has had a problem with alcoholism mm-hmm. or, or <gasps> mental illness. Yeah, mental or, illness is another one. Or anybody who has had a family member, not themselves, yeah. but a family member who has been found guilty of a crime, who served jail time. That is also something that as will disqualify a democratic politician. Yeah, obviously not a Republican politician. You do have to have to set that aside because we've seen plenty of but that on the Republican side. They, again, they seem to forgive that. Of course, they also have, and I, I don't know, maybe it's just the uh, the more secular variety, but they can all be forgiven because you know they can just then go go to the church and just you know forgive their sins, you know, and they embrace that. Which seems to be something I mean, that Democrats aren't allowed to do. There are plenty of Christian Democrats. I mean, come on, we're eighty percent Christian in this country anyway. I mean, it, by yeah. averages, that's just the way it is. So we still can't even get away with that. Because let's be honest here now, Andy, you can't be a real Christian support abortion mm. or women's rights. <laughs> no, the the. Why do the we always become have... a southern gentleman when we say things like that? Like I just need because to be sipping on a mint julep when we when we're talking about all those things. I mean, because it's a, a caricature that still has some honesty <laughs> and teeth to it. Because it's I don't know legs. about you, but I'm I feel like I'm channeling a little bit of the Strom Thurmond here. <laughs> Let's never mention that old racist uh... name again. <laughs> um. But uh, it shows that we have our history chops. We remember these things. We we know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have said Jeff Sessions and been a little more relevant. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll we don't want to the listen to him. Folk. We don't want to listen to him either. <laughs> Any? You no, know, there's there's a number of things. I mean, I don't think we're going to get a lot of of good Democratic stock in into office until we can actually prop up for a national position. An atheist. Yeah. And that's going to be hard. That's going to be really hard. Actually, I would like to see a a non-primary religion person up as well. In a Even major that would position. be hard. Yeah. I mean... Because at least that, that, I think you... Again, for what I've seen everybody else, you'd have that before you'd have an atheist. Because then it's like, okay, it's a Hindu or, you know, somebody of my particular leanings. Yeah. Or, yeah, or you know, a Sikh pagan, would get get more yeah. has more likely of getting elected than a pagan because well, uh, at least a, they believe in something. You know, would be the idea, but yeah, that that's at least the thing, yeah. start the 
Yeah, but that I look at it going again, looking at long term view, that would start the transition going, okay, well, if we get this in there, eventually, you know. I, I think an atheist has a better chance than a pagan. I was going to say that, yeah. I really do because uh, false barely. idols and. Yeah, only barely. Because that because even with a pagan, you know, at least they have they have a concept of where their morals come from. Yeah, it, beyond that, it's the idea of I've actually looked at the studies people have done, and when it comes to voters, and they're more comfortable voting for somebody who believes in something in yep. their view, rather than an atheist. Yeah, as long as they don't think that they're a terrorist jihadist. Yeah, that kind of thing, <sighs> just automatically. So. Yeah. This was a really good conversation that we totally didn't mean to have. Yeah. But I think it's... really get a point three, though. <laughs> super valuable. But yes, we probably should get to point three so that we can wrap it up. Um, it's also jur- rather important, because that's a First Amendment issue. Yeah, journalists at inaugural protests charged with felonies. Yay! Several journalists Whoa, who hello. were arrested while covering the... Go away. <laughs> yeah, I hate the autoplay bullshit. Ugh. It's USA Today. Stop doing yep. the thing. Okay. So they did the thing. All right. Let me blow this up here. There we go. Okay. All right. So uh, who brought this in? You I did. Boy, you brought Anonymous in. Buffalo. Anonymous Buffalo. You brought all the stories. Charging in with more stories. Charging <laughs> in. <laughs> okay. Fucking shit up with more stories. That's right. Six <laughs> journalists await. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why we're still here. No, uh, six journalists await their legal fates after they were among the 230 people charged with rioting during the inauguration day events in downtown Washington. Felony charges of rioting or inciting to riot carry the potential for 10 years in prison and a fine of up to twenty five thousand dollars. The six were released the following day, with each with preliminary hearings scheduled within the next two months. All were near the hashtag Disrupt J20 protests on the streets not far from where, at about the same time, President Trump was being inaugurated January 20th at the U.S. Capitol. Police charged those arrested with felony rioting, which is used when there's property damage of $5,000 or more or serious bodily damages. Was there $5,000 or more damage? According to police reports, protesters smashed out plate glass uh, windows at businesses including Starbucks, SunTrust Bank, and Wells Fargo Bank and destroyed a limousine. Damage caused was in excess of $100,000, police say, and some police officers were injured as protesters resisted arrest. One officer was taken to the hospital and since released. Now, those people were those black hooded guys. Uh, what was their moniker that everybody was calling them? They they had a specific name. Don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm off. I'm honestly not educated on what they uh, were calling themselves or anything like that. Well, the the, the disrupt J twenty was, you know, the whole that was the name of the protest they were doing. I don't know if that's also the name of the group. No, yeah, I think it no, actually might be though. I don't think so. There, there's something else. There, there, there was a name uh, specific to them. Uh, hmm, can't remember which it was, but people were telling them stay away, and they were thinking that those uh, provocateurs, the ones that were breaking things and, and everything, were actually like paid protesters that had nothing to do with anything seen else. A lot of the tagging they did, and I'm going, yeah, these are not main protesters. Yeah, they could have not. been paid. They may have been paid everything else, but looking at the tags they were using, looking at the stuff they're doing, like no, at the very least, this whole group were radical anarchists. Yeah, yeah so not the <laughs> the journalists that were charged were a senior producer with online news site Vocative, Alex Rubenstein of RT America, Washington-based channel that is part of RT, the state-sponsored media outlet originally known as Russia Today. Documentary mm-hmm. filmmaker Jack Keller, independent live streaming journalist Matthew Hoppard, freelance journalist Aaron Kantu, who has written for Vice and The Guardian, and an independent photojournalist Shay Horse. Um, legal oh. observers and medical personnel were also among the large group that police surrounded and arrested. No, this, this, because of these six, I think I'm fairly certain why these six got, got pinched. Um, because they didn't represent a named 
uh, journalistic group mainstream mm-hmm. that the police recognized. Mm-hmm. And that's why they're being charged. Also, if you're a freelancer or any sort of indie, many times they will tell you you're not a journalist. That's true. Yeah. In which case, I will laugh in their face and show my press badge. Yeah. But it sometimes that don't even matter. They won't even recognize the credentials. I know. It's that you have to have the backing of something that the cops recognize. Mm-hmm. And it's not because all cops are bad. It's just some cops are ignorant bastards. And it only takes the one arresting officer not recognizing that, hey, this may be a good guy or, oh, I'm just going to round everybody up and let let the legal system sort it out. Found Which is it. kind of what they did here, it sounds like. Okay, I found it. The guys in the, uh, in the Black Mass were uh, referred to as Black Block B L O C protesters. Mm-hmm. So let's see. Uh, according to some posts, if you see someone dressed in all black with a ski mask and a black cap that can be pulled over their head, move as far away as possible. They're what's called black block. They are provocateurs who want to start a riot and provoke the police into cracking down hard to make headlines. They are bad news. Get away. Get very far away. Black bro. Black Bloc protesters were already out in D.C. today. This is out on the 20th, uh, and it will happen tomorrow. Protect yourself, uh, my friends. Use your constitutional rights to peaceful assembly, but please protect yourself. Um, This was actually, uh, that was by Scott Jennings. Somebody out there. So, there is a group of people that do these things. Yes. And, and according to the reporters, they were yeah. there to observe and report on them. Because yeah. that's newsworthy. Yeah. Yeah. But they and medical personnel were summarily arrested. Let the legal system sort them out. Yep. That's sometimes just as a rank and file officer, what you're told to do. And if you try and buck the system, they crack down on you. Yep. Which is fine until they're charged with, you know, the charges they got. That's where you go, okay, now you're stepping a bit far. I can understand doing a whole, okay, we're arresting everybody in this area. But once you can easily, quite easily confirm, oh, wait, these are journalists. Okay, now, and they weren't directly participating. They're not with these guys. They were just covering them. Okay, at that point, you just, you're supposed to let them go. Mm-hmm. This is, again, seeing all this stuff coming down and going, this is creating a message. Yeah. It really, in my opinion, uh, whoever the prosecuting attorney is involved and if they've gotten involved yet. Um, cause is while they're arrest, is it a message or is it just par for the course? I think it's par for the course, honestly. I think given the context, people have a right to be concerned. Yes. I would say like, that, I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not making the judgment call that like, yes, this was definitely, but I'm just saying, given the context of the things that we've heard lately, I can understand why people are worried. Now there may actually be pressure applied from the white house to continue prosecuting these folks just cause let's stick it to some journalists. But at the same time, until we know who the prosecutor is, we're not going to have a a good picture on this. I I think, again, justice moves slow. They're they're arrested um, and they have the charges set against them. Any good um... lawyer can make their bones on this case. Oh, yeah. 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 They'll get away. You know, that the, the, this will not affect them. If anything, it'll be a, a badge of honor to several in the press corps that, yeah, I was arrested. Yeah. Uh, well, as members of the press know that that that's that's a badge, yeah. um, though it's an annoying one to carry. Yeah. Uh, but it's street. But cred. No, <laughs> it does. happen. But, <laughs> but for a a a good law firm or a good lawyer, 
uh, I would be approaching <laughs> slam dunk. I was a DC based lawyer and I, I wanted to get my name out there. I'd approach one of these gentlemen and do it and try and go like have them recover the, the attorney's fees from the government for wrongly arresting my clients. Mm-hmm. At least the legal fees. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be easy. There is a, um, there is something called Hanlon's razor. And I think that we really need to start applying it as often as possible. Okay. And that is never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity. Yeah. Fair. I forgot, oh. I forgot it was called that, but yeah. yeah. Or don't assume bad intentions over neglect and misunderstanding. It is so no, easy be, for things to malicious. just be stupid. They're just stupid. Yeah. Be, <clears throat> because in, in many cases, it, it could be just institutional awareness. You know, there's the way things happen that way. They might not have been malicious at all. They might not have had any of those ideas in their head. They were... Following orders, as we've heard before, but those can be stupid ideas. Sometimes it takes people to to really go beyond that. But all in all, conspiracy theories don't exist. We see them because we are pattern-seeking creatures. We desperately want to make sense of the universe. By and large, conspiracy theories don't exist, which is why when there is a conspiracy theory, it's really cool to watch. In a horrifying way. But they're very difficult to make happen because the world is chaos. So just word to word to everybody out there as we take a giant salt lick to everything that we're going to have to have to deal with for the foreseeable future. Never attribute to malice that which can be adequately explained by stupidity. Yeah, and and just looking at taking a hard look at who was arrested, I'm really not surprised that the producer was arrested because they're probably not the one with the camera. No, but they're probably the one with the big mouth saying that you can't do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah, the, pr- the producer if, would get, would get arrested. The cameraman would probably get arrested under most circumstances unless they were smart and just did exactly what they were asked to and put it away. Yeah, it, it any any flicker of defiance is going to get you arrested yep. in, in this day and age. Um, and and even the the old cameraman's trick of not turning the camera off, but, but putting it down, it yeah. down, <laughs> yeah, doesn't work anymore in a lot of cases. Sometimes um, it does. They're small cameras. <laughs> so, sometimes it does. Yeah. Um, Especially when you've but, got the GoPro just t- attached to your chest. It's like, what? I'm not even carrying anything, man. I got my hands up. <laughs> but in, in this day mm-hmm. and age, you're going to get arrested. And with yeah. th- this list, nobody that was of of anything that those cops could recognize mm-hmm. got pulled in the net. And it was just, it was an arrest fest because there was violence and damage being done. Okay. I think that we've gotten as, enough out of that to, uh, to wrap it up. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, if you've enjoyed what we've done here tonight like to help us out there are a few ways you can donate to the show through patreon.com that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash O'Reilly Radio and get early access to show content Uh, also uh, reviews on iTunes are always very helpful the algorithm will put us in front of more people if we get better ratings also tell somebody about us word of mouth advertising is always fantastic and of course you can engage with us directly send us a message on the social media or the electronic mail at O'Reilly Radio Podcast at gmail.com or if you're the more talkative sort how about 470 Zero two 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 six seven five nine. It's always ready to take your call or your text. Standing, standard messaging rates do apply, of course. And Amber. 
And if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255, available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention and crisis resources for you or your loved ones, and the best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time with us. This has been O'Reilly Radio, part of the Random Acts Company. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including the music Rocket and Pemgia, created by Kevin McLeod of Incomptech.com. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time.